Welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. There's no mic this week. Dan's doing anything. If everything, if anything goes wrong, blame Mike who's not here. Not that. Dan, you have no responsibility here. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. Before we launch into this episode, I've got two guests here. We've got to give a quick shout out to two of our sponsors. First of all, Thompson's Tea, the guys that bring you Punjama. Thompson's, Thompson's didn't start making tea a couple of weeks ago. They didn't at the start of the lockdown go... Let's let's get a let's get a horseshoe box. Is that what they're called? Horseshoe box? Let's get a horse box and turn it into a cafe and start selling tea. No, they've been making tea since eighteen ninety six. And I think you'll agree that's not a fad. That's that's a long time making tea. Fourth generation, born and blended in Belfast, and they make of course Punjana and a whole range of Thompson teas. And I, we said to the guys at Thompson's, what do you want us to do? Like a discount code or encourage people to like buy your tea online or anything? They went, No. Just in their own words, they went, just tell people what's what when it comes to tea. So you've got to drink Punjana, the Friends of the Tea With Me podcast. And when we were chatting to the guys from Punjana, we said, what do you do? You know, is it like, do you get robots to taste the tea? You know, and then and then do some graph, you know, is there like a graph for it? The guys from Thompson taste it all by mouth. They taste it by mouth. And they give a, a bit like Gladiator, they give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yous are laughing, not all... Tea companies do that. Some taste it by foot, some taste it by nose. <laughs> some you I don't want to name names, but some of these tea companies are snorting tea. That's what they're doing. But the guys at Punjana taste it with lips, teeth, and gums. And you can taste that quality when you have their tea. They get their tea from, you know, places such as Kenya, Assam. I don't know where that is, and beyond. But it's born in Belfast ships out of Belfast and we know it as our number one local tea best selling tea in Northern Ireland so we appreciate having Thompson's and Punjana on board because that I mean when you hear Punjana you think where's that from somewhere exotic you know Stranraer Hull no Belfast right here I was about to say it's our thing but I think that's taken by a different company as their slogan but you got to drink Punjana tea it's the number one it's the official tea of the Tea With Me podcast also as per usual, manscaped.com. Now, I got two guests here. Maybe we'll get into it. I can only imagine what their pubic areas look like. I can only imagine it's a little bit like when the morns went on fire. <laughs> Scorched earth. But what we've got to get them on to is Manscaped. Manscaped do the best men's grooming products around, including the Lawnmower 3.0. You've got to make sure it's all ship shape, especially if you're getting circumcision. You gotta make sure that the doctor has room to work with and doesn't, you know, drop a scalpel into a pubic bush and lose it forever. Manscaped.com, use the code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. They've got ball deodorant, ball cleanser, ball wipes. They've got the lot. And me and Manscaped are always thinking about your balls. Manscaped.com, use the code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into this episode. It's a guest episode. I've got two guests right here, two young men. One's called <laughs> Paddy McDonald. One's called William Thompson. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. What do you, what were you find funny that I said Thompson's taste for tea by mouth? Yeah, they do. <laughs> I didn't deny it. It was just funny as well. Appreciate it. If, they, if you had said they tasted their tea through their ear, like I went, now come on, the fuck here. I didn't, other, know, I didn't know Protestants drank tea through their ear now here. I'm saying now stuff. Other here brands today. do that, let's say Tetley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, lads, cheers for coming on. Appreciate it. You look like you look like you're sitting down for a Channel 4 documentary, a father and son thing about Borstals. <laughs> 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 Love it. You do look. You do look a wee bit father and son. Do you think so? Yeah. Not 100%. older brother and younger brother. No. <laughs> no. Definitely father and son. Definitely. Definitely father and son. I think yeah. You're older than my actual dad, so it works like. <laughs> yeah. Am I older than your dad? Yeah, my dad's what? Every week you tell <laughs> me something <laughs> different. <laughs> you told me your granddad was like forty-one the other week. No, then. You fucking did. No, then. What age did you say? My, I may have said my dad is 41 because he is. No, you said your granddad was in his 50s. To be fair, where are you from? Ballybane? Tully Carnot? Tully Carnot. Tully Carnot. I my mean, mate, my mate was a granddad of 29. What the? F- oh, he was. I swear to God, I'm not even joking. He was the youngest granddad ever, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no way, that's official. <laughs> I swear. Well, in, in Daphne and Belfast. Have you got Guinness World Records on this? 
<laughs> How easy would you dish out world records? You drank a tea pretty fast there. That's the fastest <laughs> cup of tea ever drank. He was the youngest dad <coughs> ever. Not that. Cr- Granda. Granda. 20, 20, 20. So what age was he when he had a kid? He was 14. And then his kid was... Well, Obviously 14, 15, something like that. Jesus Christ. Something like that. It was very, very... What is he, has he? Is he your great grand or anything? <laughs> He's a 34-year-old <laughs> great-great-grandfather. No, well, the, 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 his grandchild's about 11 or 12 or something. Right, right, right. So he'll be having one soon? No by the not. natural order? Two years. And what are you claiming your grand is 41? I didn't say that. He I said, said my dad. Was in his 50s. He did tell me his grand was in his 50s. Well, I think he'd be late 50s. Because we were talking about work. And actually, we mentioned that your grand worked in the shipyard. And he says everybody's grand worked in the shipyard. And everybody's grand does claim to work in the Titanic and I went right he says but my granddad's like 50 odds yeah your <laughs> granddad's working in Nando's yeah. not the shipyard <laughs> yeah. I, he's I was 50s. like <laughs> no yeah he's late 50s but my dad's like early 40s you are older than my dad like if your granddad's late 50s and your dad's early 40s so that makes your granddad had your dad when he was like 10 no no because he would be early 50s then it would make him about 17 18 when he had we'll him. figure it out Listen, Paddy, I'll teach you I maths want, by the end of our podcast, I, want, I swear. I want fucking birth certificates. Do you know Do you know a lot about like your family history and your family tree and that sort of thing? Like from year back, like, no. you know, like the BBC programmes, do you know who you are? No. No, it, it, you know what's crazy? I do in one side, but my dad's adapted. Right. So it's dead strange because we actually know who the family are, right? Uh-huh. And we were told so many stories with my, my, by my dad's adaptive parents, who he calls his, his parents and his family. Um, but they used to tell us a story about who they actually were, and it turned out that it was true. <laughs> so, it was, well, we, you know what you said. My dad was... Were they like, let's just imagine, let's just say, and then they're like... No, no well, they just... told a story that my dad was dropped off in the Rolls Royce and all, till the, boy, the, the, the thing, till the Nazar floods and the Armour Road, and we were like, oh, come on, now. that's an old story. That, it's like Annie. It's like the story of Annie, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we were like, oh, come on, but then it turned out... <laughs> That it was true. So it's a, a Rolls bit, Royce. You're going to get dropped off at a Rolls Royce. No, my dad. Your dad at what somewhere like they would so leave. So he kids. was born in in Tyrone, and then they brought him to the Nazareth Lodge and dropped him off. Holy! And he got told that like as in he oh, got that's told like that an old in, And then they, they would have seen like lorries driving about on the Falls Road when he was a kid, and then he was told like that's your family's company. You know that's who that's where you came from. And then that is, and then that was. It true. all turned out to be true. Yeah. Holy shit. You said it was like Annie. It's like Annie in reverse because Annie gets yes. adopted by the rich yes. family whereas yes. this one they go back. fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> so literally. The reverse so, Annie. So we don't know that. So like when, it's a bit shit when you get asked by a doctor like do you know your is there, is there anything in your family history? All we know is who his mum is and who her family is but we don't know who his dad is. We don't know any of that. So it's a bit grim whereas on the other side of family I can go right back. You know like my bad ones it's, it's metal because they're all like proper Republican Irish. And really, yeah. that surprised me. I didn't have. No, you weren't thinking. And they and they came. <laughs> they actually came from England, and I was like, "Oh fuck, this is a shocker!" You know, they're all going to be freaking out now, like proper English family that they're came bigger, to fucking Ireland. Do you know what I mean? Bigger so Brits like, than me. These are, <laughs> oh, these are proper Brits. <laughs> it's the irony of it. Do you know what I mean? But it's uh, it's uh, they actually left England because they were Catholic. So, and it was at the time of. Uh, so the whole changing, you know. So that there's a cousin of mine done all the history, on, and then he he found that out. So, they, um, uh, so I, I love that you know all that detailed stuff, and William doesn't know if his grand is in his fifties, sixties, well, forties. Like his father, I am adopted. Like so, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know fully. I know parts, but like the way people are like, "Oh, your uncle's all bald and stuff." I'm like, "Fuck, some of them are." I don't know the full like. Like I don't know family history either. So it's Listen. just a real fucking. Don't <laughs> <laughs> your hand's right on my Me dick. And Shane got you here today, and Shane started off by telling you, I'm your dad. <laughs> uh, how much of a mug off would that be if he just, you know, got into comedy just to really get to know you and then was just like, listen, I am your dad? 10 out of 10. See, if he I still wouldn't believe him. Like, he could have birth certificates on, and I'm like, nah, you know what? Oh, Paddy 100% knows gag. You know a guy does birth certificates in 25 like, minutes. Yeah, he got Obama his, and like, it's all faked. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all legit. Yeah. They're stopped. We were talking just before this podcast about them, <coughs> about the song Penny Arcade, and trying to figure out, like, why Loyalists, like, took it, or, like, what the symbolism is. And we're trying to work out, do they change the lyrics of it, or is that just... They just sing it as is. 
The only thing they add in is during the like bridge to the chorus, they put in "Here We Fucking Go." <laughs> so the full song's not changed apart from that. Apart from then, they just go "Here We Fucking Go." Step up and play. <laughs> that, that's the only thing they change. <laughs> I love that they think that is just such an anthem that they're like, "No, just keep the lyrics on that one, and we'll put a "Here We Fucking Go" into it at some point." But then there's like we, we were talking about loads of songs that they change. Yeah. Simply the best. Well, simply the best, they don't actually say anything. That's another song that's just... No, they do. No, they do. They, they do. do they? Because yeah. when he was... Remember my limelight one William show? was singing it before you arrived. <laughs> oh, I should. Oh, I my should lime, my pop first limelight yeah. two show. Oh, but I'm saying, all they do is add words in to where there is nothing. No, no, they changed the course. Why? Simply, simply the best. best. First battalion of the UVF. Better than anyone, any member of the IRA. Hardy. I'm doing this like William Shatner. Like, How does he know it? Because things. he co-wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> he's singing it from he was that height. <laughs> same idea by Sean Lime like too. He was doing warm-up and I brought him on to that and didn't tell him. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I didn't come on, remember? Because he went, I'm away for a piss here. Then bring me on. I misheard him and, and I, thought he was like, right, bring me on. So he's away for a piss. And then I came on and I was like, I was in the toilet there and I thought the UDA arrived. <laughs> I said, instead of doing a piss, he ended up doing a shape. <laughs> 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 to make it worse for you, the crowd was joining in, so singing, singing the version I know that I just said. Uh, I actually put the clip up on my Facebook and somebody <laughs> like below it to see people going, but they actually singing that. And I was like, yeah, no, you heard it, and they were like, oh, and right. William, see when you, you all sing this, do they like, do they sing it like they're singing a football chant, or will they like sing, sing it? Oh, no, no uh, one said it. Like, first oh, battalion what? of the U. It, it's proper, girl. like, first there battalion. There is a girl you can hire, but that she does. Paddy, I know exactly who you're talking about, I and I am obsessed. I am obsessed. I know exactly who, I don't know her name, but I don't know who, it's maybe even like one name, and she, she sings in the clubs, but like, Sings. sings it, yeah. Dan, can you try, can you write loyalist female singer? So she <laughs> <laughs> Here, Dan, you want to go? You want to go get us a cup of coffee? Or... <laughs> Hold on, I look it up, Dan. I look it up. Uh, yeah, yeah this is... but I mean, I get obsessed with stuff like this where you're like, how is that a thing? But she's cleaning up. She's oh, she, she, she's very, the Protestant very busy. Nathan Carter. Yeah, yeah. So she sings it properly, like, and she's a good singer. And she goes around the clubs and she sings the anthem. There's something I love about the, the old men that sing in like those clubs. You know, they're like my height, but like 15 stone. They always wear like wee button up shirts and they're just murdering Robbie Williams' angels. She's Emma, called... Emma Loyalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think when your stage name is Emma Loyalist Singer, you know what you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not getting booked for the feel, let's just say. <laughs> But why not? That's what I. That's what well, I say. Well, hundred percent. Get her a duet with the Wolf Tones. Hundred percent. Bring her on before she been. <laughs> there we are from Glasgow. Thank you to Emma, the loyalist singer. Here is this one. Going home, British soldiers. <laughs> Will you please get one cool FM show doing that, presenting like that? Would not that be class, <laughs> wouldn't it? She's called. Oh, there's one called Lisa from Battalion. Hold on. I think this is who I'm talking about. The, by the way, the beats are always shit. Full dress and all on. And that's it. Full that's, cabaret loyalism. I mean, where would you get it? You can just hear in the background the 50 year old man steaming love on that. Well, by the way, yes, because they're used to, like you say, ugly 15 stone lads singing it. <laughs> yeah. So when there's a blonde woman in a dress. It's the best time ever. Also, that's in the Ulster Hall. How come every once in a while the Ulster Hall goes very, very loyalist? It goes very loyalist. And very, like if you look at the events it's been on, it's mad though. Like it's a, it's like a, rallies and, and aye, everything. Like you can, it's a, it's you can just book it. It's so I love the way they'll be like. It's you like know. the hooker of halls, isn't it? Like I like. I like, like you let go, anyone on. By the way, Paddy's on go. in November. Uh, I like well, you keep it up. You'll not be fucking <laughs> on before me. <laughs> fucking slobber. I love the way it's like. Loyalist Splinter Group rally and it's all decked out in Union Jacks and then the next night it's fucking Passenger. <laughs> well, you only need the light when it's burning low. <laughs> <laughs> Damien race in the wolf tones. But the, you know what's mad? See what you're saying about that? It's mad because, like, in Republican songs, right? Yeah. Most of the most <laughs> famous ones are Glaswegians. Yeah, that's true. Are the wolf tones so Scottish? No, no, they're Irish, right? But they would do. They would play a lot in Scotland. Well, they could. Well, they play all over the world. Yeah. yeah. Who's uh, the big Irish group that's English? Pogues. The Pogues. Pogues. 
Um, but they don't do like what I'm talking about. Like I'm talking about people that do just Republican yeah. RA songs, right? Yeah. So it's just all Republican folk music. You've Shabin, you have Gary Oak, you've all them boys. Did you, you say Gary Lightbody? I was like, that's a fucking career <laughs> swerve. <laughs> It's a pivot. Uh, what do you call him that's on Radio World? Jason Carr. No, what, what do you call him? Nobody likes the wee man from Strabane. <laughs> Roy Woods? I don't know. <laughs> no! What do you you're, call talk, you're, you're talking about Hugo Duncan. Hugo, Hugo Duncan? Duncan? Sure, he was a Republican singer before he done thing. No. What? No, no, listen, no, that's not true. Listen, listen, listen. I put my hands up here, naff and crossed, right? I have seen the fucking video of it where he used to he used to sing in a republican in a republican band he did 100 he's doing a big expose like here. can i say how funny is it that like you know it's been a year of conspiracy theories how far down the <laughs> list do you go when the newest one is that you go down and then the thing like it's not even a conspiracy he happened but my point I is... I think we've all had a pint and <laughs> gone no, no, and he was, sing he star. Actually sang, like, it was like the pink men or something they called them. What? So it was in a group, like, you know, a Republican group. Yeah. And that's how he started out. But anyway, so... Um, but the point <laughs> of it is... I don't believe that. The mad thing is the Republican groups from Glasgow. So everyone's standing dancing and there's these guys from Glasgow going, Are you ready for a new Ireland? And you're going... <laughs> Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know where fucking Ireland is? I say, I'll, I genuinely asked one of my questions one time, right? And I says, tell him, Alan, would you prefer a United Ireland or Scottish Independence? Right? Like, so this is a band that makes their money from Republican songs that sing about Irish freedom. So you'd expect them to go 100%, my family's Irish descent, Irish United, what did he say? Scotland. Scottish independence, mate. I'm fucking Scottish. Here's me. It's just a fucking job. <laughs> I think it seems like sectarianism in Scotland is a little bit like a pop up restaurant in that they can do it now they'll do it now and again, but it's not it's not their all year round. Mate, mate, it's fucking wild. There's but people look, who they're listen, more into it listen, than we are. Listen, yeah. Sectarianism. But the difference is, right? It's a wee bit of banter over there. Right. right? Yeah. So if they had have brought that over here. You could have just imagined Paul Clark. Two men have been shot dead on the Armour Road today. Police have spoke to the paramilitary group involved and they've said it was only a bit of banter. <laughs> <laughs> like genuinely, it's only a bit of banter to Evans is stabbing each other because you're a Fenian and you're a prod. Yeah. But they'll go to work the next day, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it is as bad over there, if not worse than here. Holy shit. They're just not separated, so they live together. So it's just like... It's rough, like, really rough. Never would have thought that. Yeah. Never would have thought that. But I know what you mean about, like, yeah. I mean, thing is, I'd say the musicians on the Republicans, like, probably tighter bands. Yeah. On yeah. stage, like, loyalist but, guys would be more like one singer. Yeah. But yeah. he's doing it all, you know what I mean? Like, he's doing it all. Whereas on the Republican side, you've got a, you know, an eight-piece. An eight yeah. You know? Whereas loyalists just pull up with, like, a wee speaker on wheels. Put their phone into it, or and wheelie, that's the music. Or a wheelie bit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most the fail is happening? Michael Conlon's going to fight the fail next year. What would, what would be the most divisive act you could book at the fail? Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know because Young the, Spencer, their the, their biggest. Their I think I think you know, Young Spencer would maybe go down alright. Do you yeah. reckon if I asked them, Young Spencer would play us on at our show? Yeah. I'm going to ask him. That was the guy I played you yesterday. Why are you just confused? putting this to me here? Like That's like me turning around and going, do you know what? I'm going to get fucking Gary Oak to bring us on. <laughs> Go ahead. No, but Collab? <laughs> you just done it on the, like, you know. I'm just making conversation. What, like, what, I'm not going no, serious we'll do, proposal. You know what we'll do? Well, you take that left hand side of the hall and I take the right hand side and we'll do two fucking shows. Oh, right? because yeah. I have a bad right hand, I can't take a right hand side? Is <laughs> that what you're doing? But that's what you, so you're doing a show called Civil War. Yeah. Uh -huh. And is it, it just a night of stand up? Because the way you pitched it to me at the start was like, it's Protestants v Catholics in the limelight. <laughs> <laughs> is that what he said? No, no, that was what the poster That's what the is. poster looks like. It's just a live podcast. Well, I'm going to do all right then, after because that's who I'm feeling. <laughs> do you know the last time you came on the podcast, well, yeah, the last time you came on the podcast, you hid my sunglasses. Uh -huh. I, well, I, I never really buy expensive things. I bought one pair of expensive sunglasses, fold up Ray-Bans. Never lost them in about two years. 
always kept them really good. Thought I'd lost them. Ripping, gonna have to buy a new pair, not tell my wife, scratch them a wee tiny bit round the sides, make it look like they've been worn. And then he texts me, mate, you're some, I've got something to tell you. I was I just said, trying to keep the old sunglasses, glasses thing going. Look, some tell you, I've taken your sunglasses here to me. All right, very good. No, where are they? She didn't reply. I had to go on a, to go on a scavenger hunt around the office. <laughs> Showed Mickey Foster where they were on the day. Well, that's why he's not here today. Because <laughs> he has been sacked. Because he was part of it. <laughs> um, things are... Today, today, like the day we recorded this, like the day everything's opening up. Uh-huh. I, I, you can do indoor stuff, I didn't. Well, ho- hopefully the RA and the UVF aren't opening up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, no, they're still on furlough. They're all sipping their balaclavas. <laughs> they're sipping their balaclavas all going down. Will you open up too? Do you get furloughed in the paramilitary? I think you're furloughed every day in that there, aren't you? Like, you know, I, don't, I don't think they since, ever stopped dealing since, drugs. Since I think they carried on. 1998, here was a big drugs vent over in your neck, I would. How are you feeling that? I oh, know, I'm raging. Prices <laughs> went right up. <laughs> fucking fuming. Three hundred and fifty thousand pound of uh, drugs was found. Here's me. Yeah, they found two bags of coke and some wee lad. It's never, it's <laughs> never impressive when what they find has a street value of anything below a hundred grand. Yeah, they Funny. also yes, and they like inflated. Like, like a knee would be like two grand. Right, right, right. There's one time they're like, we've pulled over the, uh, these people on literally just had a little bud of weed. Like I was like, that's not even a joint. Yeah, a guy with a half a liter of poppers. Like, oh yeah, he doesn't bust them. <laughs> Half a liter, but your asshole would look like a telescope. Please oh, stop the man. I sip it like water. On the weed stack road, he had a dip dab in it. <laughs> and a whopper chew. Police are really happy with the thing. If this man had a taken these, he would have went insane later on and possibly been up until about 12 o'clock. You've given me an idea. I was going to be walking about shine with a bag of coke and a lollipop. Just <laughs> dip dab. Here, I, I'll say this. I don't think I could be fucked going out. But I told you what to do. Bring your coke in and a, a salt shaker. <laughs> Where are you going? Did you By, oh, it's not suspicious to show up to a pub no. and they check your pockets and go, oh, sorry, listen, just I work, I Let's bring me own salt. Let, let me just say, I just want to season the paint. Man, right, and see if you caught somebody with something, right? If somebody had a salt shaker in their pocket and you go, and you look at him and he goes to you, mate, my kids are a fucking nightmare. They put everything in their pockets. Mm, dead on, mate. I have kids too, I understand. And you land going in. And then later on, you go into the bogs and the fucker's doing this on this fucking hand. And, and you're going, salt, is it? Is it? <laughs> Any wonder your kids weren't allowed to But yeah. But then here's the trick. Here's how you get away with it. What do you have in the other pocket? Chips. Tequila. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> It's not burger and chips, huh? Why can't you be fucked going out there? I don't know. I don't know. Neither you can do it, you don't want to do it. Exactly. I will at some point, but I thought as soon as it opens up, there's a mad rush to go, but like, I don't know. I'm very excited, I just miss being out around people, so I'm dying to get out. Like, But do you, do you go to Bali? Well, you, you would, wouldn't you? Still yeah. Young. Yeah. Still young. Yeah. Still young. His grand is as well. Yeah. My grand is 28. Four grand generations of his family. family are still grand just finished his A-levels, right? <laughs> 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 Tuesday. But, like, do you, because you worked in the door for so long, yeah. do you like going... Does that change the way you look at being in bars? Uh, like, looking for trouble... Like, not looking for trouble as in, like, to get involved, but, like... I was always like that, anyway. I'm terrible one fat. Even before I was a doorman something happened in the bar, I was in the fucking thick of it. Do you know what I mean? used to go, why do you need to get involved? It's because you've started. Even if, even if it was nothing to do with you, you always end up somehow. hundred percent. If something's going to happen, I'm in the middle of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If something's going to happen. So you're out for a meal, if you and Andrea are out for a meal, mm-hmm. and something kicks off, will you still? Yeah. Because you just can't help yourself? I don't know what it is, it's just, don't get me wrong, if somebody, like we were in Manchester one time, right, we went over to a United, United match, and a guy came into the bar to rob it, or a nightclub, with a gun, and we were the only ones that didn't duck, but we didn't see him, <laughs> right, so, <laughs> the cops all came, and the barman was like, them guys didn't even, and the cop came over, and he was like, why, it's very suspicious that everyone in the bar, and the camera, ducks down, do you all just continue drinking, and just sit there, and I went, we didn't see him, and he went, oh, I hear the accents, it's okay. <laughs> I understand that I'm like no we didn't see him just where it was there was yeah. a pillar we, we didn't see him you know but there's limits to what you'll do but if I'm out and something happens I'll try and help somebody or I'll try and oh, break it up or not, not get involved in it because hey there's a fake cowboy pump in the middle no I'm talking about like 
I just can't let something happen without helping somebody or yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's sort of like trouble follows. Would know? would bouncers get involved in that sort of thing on a night out? As in like would most bouncers if they see a fight break out and they're in a different bar that don't work in? Different ones with different ways. Do you know what I mean? I've been out with bouncers and they're just like uh, and the like they could be a fire and you have to get people out through windows and they'd be like, nah, it's mine they know, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it just depends on the certain people. And then there was bouncers that I worked with. Like the best thing they ever done was to legal, make it all legal. To take away that sort of paramilitary, psycho, fucking doorman attitude. But what's what the mean? difference now? What do you mean make it legal? Well, you're, you're licensed now. So like years ago, <laughs> doing the door, you would have had people work with you who were there to beat the fuck out of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was giving them a license. Well, you'd always hear of people, bunchers who would say, walk around the corner here with me and we'll... Yeah. And I hated that. Hated yeah, yeah. And then, what would have happened was, say, my mate used to run the doors and he used to be, like, on the phone and go, listen, I have to go to somebody's house here and, and give them four grand. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, one of my boys beat somebody up last night. I'm going to go down and pay them off so they don't get any. Because obviously everybody was getting paid. Say if that was me, I would be delighted with four grand. Mm-hmm. I would think you. Were, I, I would think if someone was coming around with a few quid here, I would think it was five hundred quid. And then when you brought four grand, I go, yeah, that's what I was expecting. But in my head, it wouldn't be. What I was yeah. expecting far less. William, if you got you, you got beat up by bouncers, and the next day they arrived at your door with an envelope full of money, what are you expecting in that? At least twenty quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, West Belfast, the average whiplash was about two and a half, three grand. So you had to sort of like better that because they've got a bit of a thumping. Do you remember everybody got claims? It was still like do. a decade still. Well, oh. I thought that culture was kind of gone a bit. No, it's still there. Nah, people will People will take. If like anybody it. had a nice car, they and they were like your age when you were younger, it it was because of a claim. Yeah. Or they were a drug dealer. Yeah. Or both. Sometimes they weren't even drug dealers and they get shot. Just well, you get money for getting shot? Oh, you get money for getting shot too. But what I'm saying is, if you bought a nice car... When you <laughs> shot him on here, I have to go pay him off. <laughs> <laughs> say, you were, say when you were younger, right? And you had a nice car, everybody thought you were a drug dealer. But yeah, the thing yeah. about that was, in the Catholic districts, that was dodgy because you were selling drugs, you were selling them for loyalists. Right. Which meant you were getting shot in the head. You yeah. were getting shot in the knees. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you had to like... Keep the receipt for your car. No, it's my man's DLA car, sort of. Comes fuck. down to how badly do you want that Nova? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking tortured. Have you, you ever got in trouble? I don't think you would ever get in trouble with bouncers, no? <laughs> I have only myself been kicked out once, and it was at my school formal, right? And I was fucking hammered. And it was in like some big fancy hotel, like the Claude, and somewhere really fucking fancy. Even if it's like somewhere really fancy, and it's at the Claude, and I was like, what? I can't, I can't remember where it was exactly. <laughs> you about to say the travel log? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was in the Premier Inn, big, dude, there's so many crisps out. It was nothing, no, it was yeah. big. And they had these big fancy sinks in the toilets, and I was so hammered. <laughs> what, hold on, hold on. Fancy sinks? No, I, like, like big, like fountains, like marble fucking sinks, like they were really fucking good. I love that. I went there. You rang it home. Whitey'd. want to see these <laughs> fucking <laughs> sinks. <laughs> I whitey'd in every single one of them. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, it would fill up and it would move the next one, go, oh, and like every sink in the toilet was just covered in bulk. And then they, the bouncers came in and we were like, who was this? And I was so drunk, I was like, maybe if I tell them it was me, they'll be like, well, he's being honest and we'll let him stay. And I went, no, it was me. And they were like, yeah, get the fuck out and just threw me out. And I managed to sober up, and they were like, right, you can come in as long as you don't drink again. Five minutes, just went straight back to the bar. <laughs> That's been the only but time I've ever got thrown out. School forums used to were wild. Yeah. And I'll always allowed to happen. Yeah. In, in, in hotels and in big bars. But, but that, I think that's changed. No, no, it's still... I, not that I go to many. But, like, is, but it that the, is it that the police just go, you know what, blind eye for this, for this formal? Because... You know what every upper sixth formal there's gonna be seventy percent of kids drinking them underage. Yeah. But they but you I've never heard of one being raided. It seems they they do checks and they're like, Oh, is everybody over eighteen and you're meant to bring ID? But it's one of those like Yeah. They'll look the other way if you don't have it. Like I went to a for I got asked to leave a formal. My mate was going with to his girlfriend's school formal and uh he goes, Mate, her mate really wants you to go as as her date. And I was like, Flip, I never met her. She's going by my Bebo pictures, right? So I'm buzzing. I was like, unreal. Bebo and uh, Did you check her picture? Yeah. And I was, I was looking forward to it. I was like, she's brilliant. Good yeah, she's good looking. So here, so I was like, brilliant. I'd, I, I'd never been, because I left school in fifth year, so I'd never been to a formal. Um, so I was really looking forward to it. And I got her number 
from her friend, my mate's girlfriend, and text her and said, you know, cheers for the invite, looking forward to it. Um, do you want to like, my mum said, I think, ask her like about the colour of her dress and stuff, get a corsage made and all, and I said, brilliant. When I got there, I realised that, oh, it was just my girlfriend, my mate's girlfriend must have just gone, I'll get him to bring his mate so he doesn't feel by himself, right? So I hadn't been headhunted right. the way yeah. I thought I did. Yeah. And I realised that whenever, whenever I got there, there's like the big name chart, you know, of everybody's name, even if you were with, you know, just and a butcher. your mate's name? Everyone's name, my mate's name was in full, and just one name stood out because it was like one word, and it wasn't like a South American footballer, you know, like it wasn't like a Cleverson or something like that. It was just one word, and it was just guest, and that was me, the only person there called guest. And at my at like everyone's place name, they all had their full name, and it was just <laughs> guest. Did you try and crack the people like that? That's your name. You're like, hi, I'm guest. I'm like, I Prince. didn't have an opportunity because no one spoke to me, especially the girl who I was there with on a date. You should, you should have brought a deck of cards and be sitting there like guest, <laughs> the magician from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> put a mask on. And like, <laughs> they actually, they actually put the tea on by mistake. Guess which card? Which is the guess. six of hearts? <laughs> the modest one I was at, I was at loads of formal, but the modest one I was at was at Roses. <laughs> up until recently. <laughs> you know? And uh, what basically happened was I ended up going there. It was a girls' school, and I couldn't get in anywhere to sixth form. Like, my school put me out, so right. I wasn't allowed to do sixth form there. Right, I'm but fully I, with you up until this point, right? I got all the results, right? Yeah. So my ma was a teacher in the colleges, and she was like, you're not going to college because you'll not turn up. You have to have a school environment. So... She brought me to St. Rose's and she asked the sister in there, would she let me in? All girls school? All girls school. And she was like, there's his results. And she was like, yeah, no problem. I'll let him in. And I was the first boy to go to that school. <laughs> I have a months. fox here. Do you mind if I put it in with all your hands? Absolutely. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the maddest bit about it was I actually get put out of the school for getting somebody pregnant. Uh, so that's not even the maddest thing. That is... If I had to guess what happened to you going to that school, <laughs> yeah. I've just won a tenner. That's it was like, I can't believe my man's phone fest. So you went to an all-girls school? I went to an all-girls school in six years. Not joking, did you have to wear the uniform? Yeah, and but skirt our trousers and... didn't have the worst skirt. Oh, okay. How did that... And did you get like, were you loving that? It was or, like or, celebrity or were you very status. Embarrassed? It was like celebrity status. So did all, like, did all your mates think legend, unreal and stuff, but was the reality of it different? Were you like... Embarrassed now, or was it great crack? I you loved it. What if you needed the shit in school? What did you do? I had a key for my own toilet. That's <laughs> outside. <laughs> so, so did I. <laughs> I had a key for my own toilet. <laughs> so did you for a different reason. Did you walk around like Flav of Flav with it around your neck? <laughs> like giant key. It was, uh, they actually didn't lock the toilet at the start, but then the, the girls started using it. So then it says, no, we'll lock it and you have a key. But then four other fellas ended up joining the school because they seen how successful it was for me <laughs> so it was like all did these you get that were you ripping not really because they're all ugly fuckers so I was alright <laughs> do you know what I mean but um, so uh, we went to the formal and because it was a girl's school there was a girl in the school that I, she says to me will you go to the formal with me and I went well it's a bit shit that we're going to loss to bring somebody with us that's our friend oh, okay. so I says if you bring your friend and I'll bring mine and she mm -hmm. went right okay so on the night, we were, I brought Heskey, who's my best man, right? So me and him ended up going in to get the suits. So I just says, Mama, change in the suits here in the town. And we went for a drink. And we didn't go to pick the girls up. We just got drunk in the town. So the two of them had to get their photo together. And then when we arrived at the formal, the photographer was like wrapping up. And I was like, that's my date, mate. And like, this is 1996, 97. The photographer's like, what do you mean that's your fucking date? And I'm like, that's why I'm bringing the formal up. And I showed him, that, look, Paul has got put, that's my, that's my. And we got our photo together and all that there, but we went in. But it was that's in, my fucking boy. It was, it was a mental, it was mental. My date. The school had nothing to do with the formal. Right. And that was the first one I'd been to where there was no school teachers or anything yet. Yeah. And because it was St. Rose's, which is down in Beachmount and the Falls, right? It was fucking mental, right? There was just head cases at it. But it was the Postman's <laughs> Hotel in Dunmurray, right? The what? The Postman's Hotel in Dunmurray. It's not in Nerdham. That sounds like right? a sex it's position. Beside, it's, it's in Seymour Hill. It's in Seymour Hill, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the trip to the Postman's Hotel. I just remember, it was in the middle of Seymour Hill, right? And I just remember somebody going, 
you see the fucking says a Union Jack on the hotel? So everybody's out, there was this fella in the tux pulling himself up the flagpole to get the flag, right? And next minute the hotel's like, right, everybody out the fuck, because they're all mad, all right? Because they started serving themselves in the bar and all. And we got outside and we're in a minibus and we were going to a place called McDee's, which was called the Pink Pussycat in the Glen Road. It was in there, Dave, right? I, I, like a Shabin. It was a port cabin and they just built a hut around it once it started rotting away. <laughs> the Pink Pussycat was right? a port cabin. The ballroom of romance, Pink Pussycat, that's what it was called, right? And we're in this minibus going to the fucking venue and I was going, this was fucking sweet minibus and all over to it. And then I looked at the driver and I went, he was at our table. And I went, where'd you get the minibus near? He goes, I fucking stole it from the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the fucking thing I wanted to fuck. In the middle of the summer road, he was like, why do you want out to me? I'm not fucking going any further with you. You've been fucking off your head all night, going mad at that thing, and you stole a fucking minibus. We're all in it informal. You couldn't have imagined it, couldn't you? The Telegraph fucking West Belfast school stole a minibus from thing. But it was, it ended up in the paper and all, like the stories from it. Holy what shit. Happened in the hotel. Did you go to the Pink Pussy Cat? Oh, fuck. God. Good night. It was brilliant. Sang Penny Arcade. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I brought up Whitey and in the Sinks now. It doesn't seem that good compared but to that, Stroke that, and a Mini Bus. That was the, that was the maddest formal I was at, right? When I had my tech formal for Belfast Met, we had it in the elephant rooms in the Europa. Fuck, I used to do it over there. Did you? Mm-hmm. And there was a guy in my class uh, who his girlfriend was sitting on his knee, and they were just, when I say heavy petting, very heavy petting. But because it was a Belfast Met formal, nobody battered an eyelid. Nothing to it. Just It was just going on right here. He looked like he, let's just say he looked like he was going, he was <laughs> visiting the postman's hotel <laughs> and he was putting the letter into the box and then out of the box and then he put it in the box and then out so of the box. So it happened. And see back then, nobody was, there, cared. was there phones? Like, could you there was it? phones, but not everybody would have had a camera. Could you you, you couldn't take a photo. Now? Oh, done. Yeah, yeah, mental. Do you know They'd what I mean? They'd be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be all over the place. Yeah. That's, They'd be famous. That's, <laughs> the days of public fingering are over. All because of phones. <laughs> Disgraceful. <laughs> yeah, shocking. Shocking. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea of a formal night, when you think back to it now, it was, it's mad the way not that, when you say like, okay, that's mad, that's a job bus. But actually when you have like hundreds of 17, 18 year olds in it's not that bad. Like no. you don't ever hear anything so, that bad. Like it could. I did stand up one. There was a st- there was one on Macrofelt, and it was me, Mickey, Colin, and General Fiasco were the lineup for the entertainment. So I remember on an audio picnic years ago, yeah. you guys talking about this really the day excited, after or something. and then the week after oh, you were right. like, oh, it was mental." Do you know? So getting, I I've done t- stand up at two formals, uh, and at this one, like that's a good lineup, like now yeah um and i can't remember who went on first and nobody wanted to leave when you're fucking 17 18 you're at your own formal you want to talk shit to people and have a drink so nobody was listening to the stand-up and just before i went on i said to someone on the formal committee tell me something here that they're, fucking, they're gonna like and he said oh there's a, a guy on the formal committee who broke his leg getting off a bus tonight to come here and one of the teachers say mr smith mr smith drove him home so say the kid was called Chris, I got up on stage and they're not really listening. And I said, uh, Chris took, uh, I said, uh, here Mr. Smith took Chris home. I said, you know how that's going to end up? I've never had a reaction like it. It just floored out like every, just because I had that one bit, that one person's name and the name of the teacher. And it, it was like Def Jam comedy. It's like everyone's like, how does he know him and all? And I was like, yeah, no worries. Guest. Just call me guest. <laughs> and, uh, to do a trick. Yeah, did blackjack. Um, but, and then the rest of the set, they just didn't listen at all. But stand up at a formal is a fucking terrible idea. I couldn't have, unless they were like, here's a serious amount of money. Well, if you did a roast of the school, that would, go, that would be good. Do you think if you'd done it now, like with the popularity oh, that you have, would it be different? It would buy you another minute. I don't Nothing else. McDonald's Christmas dinners. Like all the McDonald's restaurants. Oh, in like a function room or something? Yes. So when right, they were right. having their Christmas dinners, they were always in January. So it was always after Christmas. And a guy came to me and he's like, we have 20 dinners to do here. We have Derry, Belfast, Balamina, blah, blah, blah. You go in their room. It's the restaurant. So it's going to be young ones and old ones. But want to go in and be the entertainment? And I was like, right, no problem. First one, Belfast went in. Brilliant. Absolutely loved it. 
just got nicknamed. Where was it? In the Danish was yeah. that one. That was for Can. That's for the one on Canvey Way. Then there was one for Sprucefield in Lisburn. Done that, and that was somewhere in Lisburn. Brilliant. Went to Derry. Done the Derry one. Brilliant. Went to Ballymena. Fuck me. Why? Like, it was fucking nuts. Like proper. You weren't loving it. No, proper culties don't probably get out to do what to do, and they were just fucking bananas. And I mean, fucking throwing things at me and everything on stage. It was nuts, like I'll, crazy nuts. I'll go on the record now and also say I fucking hate gigging a ballerina. It was. Crazy. I think it's fine. I think I like ballerina, but I yeah, like at dinner, like it was just nuts. And do you know what? I was, I, I, I went to myself. I'm not even going to get annoyed because they were basically having a Christmas dinner. And I just fucking interrupted it. Yeah, and yeah. They're yeah. all getting told to stay indoors, where they were running in and out like nuts. The wor- the the worst, not the worst one. In a way, a good one. Me and Mickey Bartlett got booked to do Iceland uh, Christmas dinner for the <laughs> shopping centre <laughs> in Reykjavik. Um, <laughs> it's freezing, and uh, we it was in a holiday in Belfast, across from BBC, and we hadn't been in stand up for that. It was first like first corporate one. I think it was 200 quid each fucking brilliant 20 minute set and uh they went on they didn't change the lights so they had a disco they stopped the disco to let us do stand up but all the strobes were still going and we were it, so it was like a big long rectangle room but we were in, at the middle of the long end of it so it's not like all the eyes were on us we were just in the middle and uh it was all di- all dark but there was disco lights every once in a while going around her face and the dj just turned the music down and we got in, we were like, this is going to be a shit show. I was like, I'll tell him to turn the music off. And I think Mickey went, don't, because we're getting paid anyway. I think we both agreed to just do stand up. So I swear there was maybe 400 people there. One person who was sitting at a table near us turned her chair to watch. And she was actually like enjoying it. But me and Mickey just talked. Not even really doing stand up, just talked for 20 minutes each and got out of there. That was fucking terrible. But back then it was such a novelty, so you didn't yeah. mind. But see on Ballymena, Ballymena has a reputation as being the, the toughest place to do stand up. Yeah. It's only when you approach it like it's going to be different. I think if you just go in and do a normal set, it's You're brilliant. Great. I've had some oh, I had some of my best gigs it's ever. It's class. I just get so cheeky to people in Ballymena because they'll heckle me. And it's always something really shit. And a shit heckle annoys me, so I'll just be sitting there being like, you shut the fuck up. Like, I just get so cheeky when I do Ballymena. I don't know why. I don't know why about that one city. Nowhere else do I get like that. But it's Ballymena, not a city, they get to me. No city. It's terrible. I'm fucking courage, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> talk to me about the, well, we'll talk about the podcast first. So you started a podcast, you've done what, six episodes, seven episodes? Seven? seven? We're on seven. And we just last recorded night. our eighth last night. Was it eighth it last night? It was eighth last night. Mudblood. Do you know what I like? I can see both of you on video. Because the oh, first yeah, one, he was on a lifeguard's chair, <laughs> you were sitting on the ground. I tried to bring the try and get him out of the picture. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just, it's like, waiting to reveal my son. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> it was before we hired Sean to like do all the video and yeah. stuff so I, we were doing it on my phone but the thing is when someone's not watching the camera if the camera moves and you don't see it and, and you've done an hour show we didn't have a base or anywhere I yeah. mean, we were just putting the feelers out to see if anybody had any interest yeah. and then they did so yeah. we sort of went right okay well with legs here we'll, we'll go with it you know what I mean so do you rem- we- do you, Dan do you remember our first one the first ever episode of this and it was in the old old studio and all the Soundproofing was off the wall, but the glue was still on the wall, and it looked so shit. That was I was actually wearing a jumper. Somebody, one diehard fan watching this, will go, "I knew that." Yeah, he'd be thinking he that from the start it. of this. He says, "There's guests wearing that jumper." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guest. It was just disrespectful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Could have handwritten my name on. Yeah. Screwed it out or something. Guest. Or just even chain. Yeah. Have you had like, well, come with, Have you had any weird comments? On the videos or like do you know what I mean because when you start a new podcast you, you get like a new you'll get like a bit of a new audience and like the like YouTube comments feedback to the podcast the only thing that confuses us and really does confuse us is people who all listen to the show and if you listen to it it's us just being dirty and mad for an hour yeah. and then they'll send in a question like do you think shared education is the key to an integrated society in Northern Ireland and we've just done a whole episode on fingering. Like you're like, it doesn't. Why are you coming to us? Yeah, yeah. To solve the peace process? <laughs> like, I know we get asked some stupid questions. What you do, and and that makes you think. Do they only really watch the clips? 
and they don't listen to the whole yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just like, oh, I just follow you on that, but we don't really, really listen to it. But like, there's a guy, um, Aidan Flynn, and he owns Mars Flynn, probably the biggest uh, facility management company, building company in the north. Right. And he listen. He says that he put it up on Twitter just that um, he didn't see any of us live before, and he just found it by accident. And listen to it going around Sainsbury's, and now that's his thing on a Saturday. He goes around Sainsbury's listening to our. There's there's something m- almost more satisfying. Like, obviously, when someone comes up, so saw you do stand up last week, loved it. But when someone comes up and goes, oh, I listened to the podcast last week, it's like they've had to go to um, more effort. Yeah, to do listen it. to it, yeah. Because if you're at a stand up night and you happen to be on, then yeah. that's great and stuff. But it's sort of a night out with stand up, whereas if someone's like, by themselves, headphones in, concentrating. There's something more satisfying from someone being like seeking yeah. out a podcast and listening to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like people will quote you, or like you said this on the podcast, and you're like, I don't remember 100% that. Hundred percent. People will quote things that you've no recollection. Same with stand up. Yeah. Remember, mate. Remember that bit you did about fucking penguins ball bags. Yeah. Oh, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. And you're like, I, yeah. I never did that bit. People always do other bits. Like, do you remember? Like, me. I sometimes I struggle to remember where I live. Like, I don't remember saying that yeah. at all. And the, and uh, so the podcast Mod Blood, yeah, Mudblood. comes out on Friday. Yeah, yeah, because there's a while we were just picking it out whenever it was made, but now it's every Friday. Yeah, and we we'll recorded a few days before it's out, like, but it's it's grew really fucking. How's your well. studio coming along? It's it's getting there. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's looking well now. Yeah, yeah, no. Like it's, it's like one of the newest podcasts out, but I have no doubt when you build that studio, it'll be like one of the best studios too. Uh, well, it's getting there. Hundred percent, it's getting there. Once it's finished, it'll be. How long is it going to take? I'm hoping to have it done the next month. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is, he, is William helping? Yeah. Labour? No. Just helping by not being there. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that if you've you ever what? seen me try to build something, William, that's the most William's I can help. Quite, quite honest about what he does, he just goes, "Listen, I'm pretty useless that, but I can turn up with pizzas if you want." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll I, show I, up before I'm like, "Do you, do you know need what? a drink?" I have another mate that got. He's the exact same. Knee capped years ago, and he's no good for helping you doing that way, moving house or anything. But he turns up with pizzas. Do you know who else can show up with pizzas? Guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh. Hold that idiot. Uh, right. So we'll plug Limelight as well. You are in the Limelight, the Civil War show. Yes, nineteenth of November. Yeah. And there's a rave on after. <laughs> John Digweed's on after. Us. John who? Digweed. Is on after us. Who's like John John a DJ? He's a techno DJ from like a way back. Like I would have been. And is this shows. true? Yeah, I seen it, and I was like, are we not on that night? And I, fo- I said to him, William, what, what lame night are we in? And he was like, lame night one. And I was like, well, John Digweed's fucking on that night too. And he John like, Digweed? Digweed, yeah. yeah. Isn't he Sasha and Digweed? He sounds like someone that your dad would talk about that used to used to clean your windows. Uh, John, <laughs> John Digweed used to do window windows. <laughs> Never see you get knocked down. John Digweed just up the street. My, oh. my ma had a window cleaner that fell off his ladder and would never come back and do my ma's windows. But it was... No one's fault in the house, but he blamed the house. Remember, you know when you're like your kid hurts themselves in something, and you go, you know, they bang bang their head on the table, and you go, a bad table, hit that table, bad table. <laughs> yeah. He did that. John Digweed did that with the house. <laughs> he refused to come back. He's like, no, those cell, those window sills are. You fell off flowers like fuck. Uh, God, I'm I'll becoming you, a DJ. <laughs> I'll tell you a cracking story. A okay, guy used to work for my dad, right, the roofer, and he moved into a house in Turf Lodge, and uh, he was up cleaning his gutters and the neighbour came in and says would you clean mine as well and he says ah what's your dad have the ladder up and she says what do you owe you and he says don't worry about it of the ladder here I'll go up and clean them and he put the ladder up and was cleaning her gutters and mid clean the ladder slipped to the right and he went down the wall so because he was cleaning the gutters he had muck in his hands and he was pulling it out so he went like that and she had freshly painted her house so there was these handprints down the wall. He fell, broke his leg, and was in hospital for like three days, getting this cage around his leg, was brought home in a taxi from the hospital, brought into the house, knock at the door. The girl from next door, he thought, she's just coming, just come on in, no problem. She came in the house and she went, I see you're home from hospital. He's like, yeah, he says, terrible one of them things. And she was like, when, how long are you gonna be in that cage thing? And he was like, we don't really know. The doctor says I have to see what way it's a bad break and stuff like that. And she was like, I'm just wondering because there's like handprints down my house when you're going to get, get them cleaned. <laughs> he was like, She's my spirit animal. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, he says, So that was it. Then they decided, right, we have to fucking move because next door is fucking nuts. I love that attitude of here, will you do my gutters? 
I, I, when we first moved into our house, you have to take the bins to the top of the road, like a good bit away from, five minute walk from my house. New developments, was, things are still being built so the bin men don't want to come in. And I just saw a guy taking bins out and, and as he went past, I, was, I said, I just don't know what came on, I just went, mate, would you, would you grab my bin as well and take it up? And he, he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Like I never met him or been introduced to him. And he did and then, I, I, like he's never really spoke to me since. I sort of was, I was trying to meet new, I was sort of saying, you take, in my head, I was like, you take mine up and I'll take yours up next time. But I don't know what came over me to just go, take my bin up. It's a bit like if people, if you smell barbecue, you know, you smell barbecue in someone's garden, you go, yeah. that sounds good. Don't be afraid to crane the head over. What are you, what are you cooking? You know, get a hot dog, get a burger. Then he's going to be fooling. Then you're the bit up, go, that guest bastard. I hit him at the formal <laughs> night, making me pulse really bit up. That's Shane Todd moving next door to me. What's he like? Cheeky bastard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me to take his bit. Somebody has that story. He made me fucking take his bit up. I can't. Someone, someone could have done me bad on a story. Um, I went in to get diesel in a spar. That's all I went in for. But when I was in the queue, saw a wee gluten free section. I said, oh, don't mind if I do. A couple of biscuits, loaf of bread. Didn't mean to buy these things. Get up to the counter, paid for them, left. Didn't pay for diesel. Three days later, got a Facebook message to my like comedy page. Guy goes, uh, mate, um, just let you know, I'm a supervisor in Spar, Carrie Duff. And you know when someone says that, you're going to fucking take them seriously. Yeah. He said, uh, I think uh, a couple of days ago, Pump 4, you drove away without paying for your diesel. <laughs> and do you know what's very me? I messaged him back. I was a wee bit mortified, but I messaged him back and said, I'll call him me in the next couple of weeks and sort that out. <laughs> like, I didn't need to do it then and there. He knows, I know, I'll sort you out sort of thing. And I messaged him and said, uh, you could, you should have taken this to the Sunday world. And uh, and he said, like, LOL. And then when I went down and paid for it, I was paying the money, I was making a joke out of it. And I said, yeah, you, you should have gone to the Sunday papers. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I was thinking about it. And then didn't laugh. <laughs> I don't need the front page of the Sunday World. Although no news goes on at the minute, so that would that would, that would yeah, be in the first four news. pages, hundred percent. That is like you no know, way some you know famous people get like career rock and scandals, you know drugs or picking up prostitutes. That's mine, completely mine diesel, you. Hundred percent driving off. Diesel. The re- Today on Nolan, Shane Todd drives away without paying for his diesel. We're more shocked he didn't use red. <laughs> but first, the Bobby story funeral. <laughs> Did Bobby Story pay for diesel? <laughs> Let's find out only in today's <laughs> Was Bobby Story gluten free? <laughs> That's you know what I hear, right, when you're buying petrol and say say it's like eleven pound. Yeah. And you go up and you go, ten hour petrol there and pump four, and they'll read it back to you like you're trying to get away with the extra like one pound thirty. Do you know what I mean? Like, Do you mean eleven thirty? And you're like, Yes. Yeah. I fucking hate that. I didn't pay for diesel in Creighton's one time. Yeah. And the fucking cops hit me in right. the house yep. that night. Yep. You fucking don't do it. And like you get a wee message to Facebook. He gets I a few weeks had to had fucking And I say... I had fucking guys with guns at the door. Paddy had the SWAT. for 13 of these in the account. Paddy had the SWAT team out. Fuck's <laughs> sake. Coming in through the roof. Like generally he wrapped the door. And she's like, where's the fucking Peters at the door again? But fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> My downfall will be because I got distracted by a gluten-free section somewhere. I... Do you know you were saying that, right? The way you were talking, like Sunday World, right? Me and my dad were down to caravan at the weekend, putting the shed up for him, right? For storage. My dad's fucking brilliant in terms of, he doesn't mean to be funny, but everything he says is fucking hilarious, right? And he said to me, like we were driving down, he's like, we stopped in the apple green and somebody asked for a photo. And my dad was like, you know, you're getting a wee bit more noticeable, like, you know, he won't say famous, right? And I was like, right? And he was like, you have to be like really careful. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, like you'll just have to be careful now. And I went, in what way? And he was like, like, they're putting stories in about you being friendly and all now and like doing stuff for the UDA. He says, but like if you do something wrong, like, you know what I mean? Like something you shouldn't be doing, the story will go in. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, like, do you remember that time your dog fucking knocked an our dog out in, in Hell's Bay? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, like that'll be news now. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And he'd be like, bad West Belfast comedian. 
Dog knocks an our dog out, Hal's bay. No, you shouldn't have been there and all. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's just like, no, you just need to be more careful about everything you do. And I was like, but give me a good example. Yeah. And he was like, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not. I mean, like, that's not news. They're not going to put in my dog run into our dog and knock the dog out. He says, you take out that, what do you want? <laughs> He's training his dog to knock it out. No, I mean, and they're going to put like, spins like, on it. You just need to be careful. What do you mean you're... Like, I, I still don't... Nah, I still don't know what he means and what he was hinting at. Does he mean, like, criminal activity? Yes. Because I'm not Patty. doing that. Yeah, yes, yes. Patty. Yes. Uh, you're going to have to consider it, stopping. But <laughs> is he that part or he's like, the farm might be bugged, I can't tell you. Like, yeah, yeah. Get All metaphors, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. Or is he just generally saying, no, seriously, like they will put in about your your, your dog? You're having the magnet on in the house, or you're having this, or you're yeah. having that. I don't imagine if you got caught doing something like that, it would only help your image, do you know what I mean? I you have would, that, like, bad I boy. I think they would let me away with it. I mean, you like, look like just... a guy that would have a dog that would jump up on people, and, and, and you go, you know, he, he loves you, he loves you, and they're like, no, no, please. <laughs> please. I think what my dad means is I don't let people away with things. So if somebody does something, I'm going to, like, if somebody cuts us up, I'll get out of the car and go up and fucking wrap a window and go, listen, you fucking cunt, you fucking done. Do you know what I mean? I will. Yeah. If somebody says something to me, I'm not going to change you or what way I am, I'm just that way. Yeah. Do you know? And I think that's what he sort of meant. But it was the way he'd done it. Like, and and then you'll, he, you'll, be, you'll be on your way in, in, in 10 years' time, you know, do comedy, you end up doing a bit of acting, do some film work, it'll all go brilliant. You'll end up being up for an Oscar and you'll be on your way to LA to pick up the Oscar for Best Actor and something, and on your way to the ceremony. There's more somebody chance of me picking some, up an Aisling Award for fuck's sake, I can't even win 1am and I'm from West Belfast. <laughs> and you pay to get 1am, and I pay to get one and I still didn't get it. <laughs> I, just, I actually stole Tony Davlin's one. Award? The Aisling Award, I stole it and brought it home. What is an Aisling Award? It's, it's Aisling Awards, it's basically an award ceremony in West Belfast, but the glitz and glamour, do you know what I mean? It was like the only town you started it years ago, so you fought for your best hairdresser. Best takeaway, best taxi company. Best and you were up for best hairdresser? No, I was up for um, best doorman or something. No, I was, I was up for entertainer. Right. right. But fucking Tony Davlin won it or something like that. But I remember I'd say the awards, Paul and Moves. Remember Paul and Moves? Oh, yeah. So Pierce Elliott got it and he was pissed drunk, right? And we were outside the Europa and he was trying to get back in again for a drink. And your man's going, You need to be a resident to come in. And he went, how can I be a resident if I can't go in and book a fucking room? And your mom was going, no, but you needed to have one yeah. prior to get in. So the cops got called and we were trying to get him in the taxi and he hit the cop with the Aisling Award. That's fantastic. And I was like, like, what's he going to do? Put it on his fireplace now and go, oh, I hit the fucking Peter right there, fucking. But, <laughs> but it was a way because they took it for evidence. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like a fucking huge statue like this. I'm burying you, you, that you would do, you'd win an Oscar and hit somebody with it. Jake, sir? Uh, that's why they can't give you one. Yeah. Someone will be torture so in your speech. You'd, you'd no, win an Oscar, no. but it'd be a rubber Oscar. I don't think I've got an Oscar yet because I haven't been in a fucking film. <laughs> <laughs> the only film I was in was like Belfast's version of fucking Christmas Carl. You ever see it? It get played once in the Dublin Road Cinema and it didn't get Am I in that as well? Cormac McDonald. You are. I am in it. I forgot you're in it. William, sometimes we forget your disabilities, not He's just physical. A, William am was, I in that? Was I in it? He's in everything. Yeah. You were sitting watching TV. Late He's in Downton Abbey. He's there like, he oh yeah. <laughs> it's just this wee person standing in the background just looking like that. William, William <laughs> seeing the bag of crisps. Just <laughs> the William forgets lads. he was. He's in the baby seat in the fucking trolley and the little lads. He forgets he was Ursula <laughs> Lannister in Game of Thrones. He's like, that's <laughs> right, I was. <laughs> um, final question. Who would your dream guest be for Mud Blood Podcast if you get anyone alive? Mm -hmm. Like, I could see you with some, like, maybe paramilitary guys. I think that would be a bit of fun. Well, we have mentioned Jamie Bryson. We'd love to get him on. We were trying to get Jamie Bryson on. I don't um, think he's going to come on. But, I mean, to pick him, we're being very narrow minded. You Mark are. Bryson, I'm right? saying anyone. Yes. Anyone, so anyone on this on, on, in Ireland. Right. Anyone in Ireland? Yeah. To get on as a guest. I would be keen for a Jerry Adams episode. That's There's no need to, because you do a fucking Jerry Adams impression every episode. Can I just say, I've never been involved in Mud Blood Podcast, but I'm on. <laughs> Started good and then it tailed they, off. They get to run every week. <laughs> every week they go, there goes it. It's in. You brought it up. Um, Jerry Adams would be good. Um, I love Tommy Tiernan. 
<laughs> I think I actually tell me to link him into my head there, but then I went there's probably I don't know, Michaela McCollum maybe. My wife's reading her book at the moment, her autobiography. Yeah. And I've said I don't want to spoil the ending for you. <laughs> but she gets out. Oh, she gets out, yeah. She gets out. <laughs> Maybe it was I told this I tell this the mud puzzle. Though. I think I think I'd get Michaela McCollum on this podcast. What's that? I think I could get her on this podcast. And yeah. do you know who follows me on Twitter? Who's that uh, who's that girl that got arrested for the murder in Italy? Oh Werner Fella. Oh. Yes, I know who you mean. The American girl? Yeah. What's she called? Yeah, Amanda Knox. Amanda Knox. Follows me on Twitter. And like doesn't follow you know there's some accounts with the follow like hundreds hundreds of thousands of people. Weirdly, somehow she's been in, in jail in Italy and someone's been playing a McGoldrick video and she's gone. That's fun. Like, I'm in a bad situation. She thinks funny. you're a guest and you can get her out. A skate artist. Maybe that's what it is. She's been going around to jail in Italy going, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why they let her out. They went, <laughs> fuck, you're all right. Is she out now? She's out. She's out. She does podcast. She does a podcast? Yeah. It's with Shaggy. It's called Wasn't Me. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, she it's, does. It, it's, uh, it's named after her inspiration was Nelson Mandela. Fuck me. Like, that was a bad murder. <laughs> That's Mandela. What the, he's dead. Don't no, but he was a prisoner, him. I'm saying, and he was released. I'm saying, yeah, how no, no. could she be? I know. But she would try and put herself in the power with him, sort of thing. That's shot. I, I think they were in jail for different things. A hundred percent. In jail for murder, like, I'm just like Nelson I being, Mandela. I was being your email from a shangle. Do you know who Jerry Adams is? All right. What was he in jail for? Count people, so like that. <laughs> Lads, cheers for coming on. Uh, Civil War po- uh, Civil War podcast Civil War show 19th of November 19th, 19th of November. November It's going to be a mixture of like the po- We're going to do the podcast live And have stand up And uh, Mud Blood podcast is Every Friday Every Friday On, on everywhere YouTube We're on Instagram YouTube we're not, we're TikTok no, We're not on thing yet What Apple sake. Apple still not I've been I've sent it to them this, uh, this is not a William just sends an attachment to info at apple.com I've sent them on stick Facebook this up. <laughs> stick awesome. this up bro uh, uh, what's I'm happening? DMing what's Steve Jobs just, at Steve just, Jobs just what's happening here yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck <laughs> sake lad <laughs> calling into the Apple store listen we try we try to put this up I, I think you should take it to your local MLA now yeah, we who get is it. your local MLA Gavin Robinson is he yep. I think that's a good note to leave it on yeah, cheers it folks see you later <laughs>